Welcome back to chapter 4. We're going to start doing some more complex things, a little bit of math, a little bit of advanced programming concepts. So let's go to BP folder and we're actually going to now procedurally spawn the full grid of cubes now that we have one working. So let's make a blueprint actor. Name it BP spawner, which we will use to spawn the cubes and go to event graph and get rid of these. Now, how we're gonna do this is using nested for loops. So drag out of here and get a for loop, for loop here, not for each loop, but for loop. And we're going to control W here and linking these up. Now, again, there's a loop within a loop. This is how it works. And we're going to create three variables. First one is going to be called max row for max rows. Variable type to integer. And let's make another one called max columns, max call. And then the last one is going to be called size for the cube size, which is going to be a float. Now compile it. We're going to set the default values. The size should be 100 because the cube is 100 centimeters wide. Max columns is going to be 16. And row is going to be 10. And drag the row in and get. And we need to actually do minus one on this one. Plug it into the last index. If you know a thing or two about programming and for loops, we count up from zero. And the last index has to be minus one of the entire length of the for loop. So if it's six as the length, the last index should be five. So let's repeat it for the columns. Drag that in, get, let's control W here and connect it up to the last index. And let's clean it up a little bit here. Now, this is where we need to do some math. In order to procedurally calculate the position of each cube is to first get the index number from the row. We're going to convert it to a float. Two float, as you can see here. Let's do the same for the columns. Let's do two float. And what we need to do here is to multiply it by the size of the cube. So let's drag the size, do that, repeat this for the column, control W, drag that in here. And what we need to do now is to make a vector. So let's just drag this over here, double click here to do a little cleanup. And this is going to be the X position. And this here, the row is going to be the Y. So what we're going to do is drag out of here and make vector. Plug the Y into here, the row into the Y. And what we need to do now is to drag out of here and call spawn actor from class. What we want to spawn, of course, is called BP cube. And the input requires a transform. So what you can do is to drag the vector out, make transform like that. We can keep the rotation to zero and the scale to one. Put that in here and I would just click always spawn, ignore collisions. And that should be it. So let's compile, save, go to the main level. Let's delete this cube that we have here and let's drag in the BP spawner, let's zero everything out, and press play. As you can see, there is a problem because the cubes actually start spawning from zero and it has to really spawn from here. Now, if you're lazy, you can just drag the spawner actor to here, but let's think like a programmer and we're gonna use some math. So let's stop this, go back to BP spawner, and it's actually quite simple. All you need to do is to subtract the index number here by the number of the last index divided by two. So let's take the number of the last index. We're going to make it 
into float. And then we're going to divide by float by two. And let's disconnect this. And we're going to do a minus float with half of the number of the last index. And then pipe this in to the multiply. Let's move this out of the way so that we can make space for this here. Once again, take the number of the last index, turn it into a float. We need to divide by 2 and negate the index number with this. And pipe this in to the multiply. And let's do some cleaning up here. So this is it for spawning it in the right position. So compile, save, go back to main level and click play. And as you can see, all the cubes fit perfectly within the frame. And just start clicking, see how it works. Yep, they all work, but they don't grow because we haven't implemented the recursive function. Now recursion is a tricky concept to understand and I don't really want to turn this into a theory course and I also can't guarantee that you understand it. So let's just say it's like a relay race where this is the first runner, it's just gonna ask, hey, which one is not playing? All four are not playing, so they're gonna start playing. And then they're gonna ask the same question, which one is not playing? It will be these three and this one won't do anything because it just played the animation and it will just keep propagating the function call all the way until it reaches the edge. So that's about it. Let's begin implementing the recursive function in the BP cube blueprint. Let's go to the viewport here, click the cube. We're going to add a sphere collision volume. So let's search sphere collision. We're going to name it search volume. We're going to do 64 in sphere radius and then minus 100 in the Z. As you can see, it sort of sticks out like this. And essentially this is going to be the thing that we use to get the reference to the cubes that are adjacent to this cube. And go to event graph. We're going to create a new custom event. We're going to name it pop add adjacent and we want to fire this pop adjacent event in here in order to do that let's do a pop adjacent call function just like that make some room for this and let's connect it up so what happens is that when we do the pop it's going to go through this, and when it reaches here, it's going to call this event. And in this event, we need to get the search volume, and then drag out of here, and you're going to use something called a get overlapping actors. And the class filter will be BP cube, because that's what we're looking for. And this requires a for each loop. Connect that up to the event, and we actually have to do a cast to BP cube, and we're going to call the pop event like that. And we also have to pass in the color from here. Now we can, of course, do this, but it's very untidy. So, what we're going to do is make some space here. Let's just drag this over and rather than passing this through here, we're actually going to just promote to variable. Let's just call it color and do this here. Get rid of this as well. And for this, we need to drag this in here. Get color, connect that up. Let's bring this back together. And we also need the color over here. And this is it for now. Compile, save. Let's go to the main level, click play. And 
as you can see, there is an issue because there is an infinite loop. And in order to stop this from happening, we need to do a delay. So again, we're going to make some space here. And in here, we're going to do a delay. So hold down D and click, connect it up. And we're going to use a random float generator here. So type random float in range. My values are going to be 0 0.05 to 0 0.3 seconds. So what this does is generate a random float within 0 0.05 and 0 0.3 seconds. And let's test it out now. Compile and save again. And click play. And let's test it out here. As you can see, it seems to be working fine, but there is actually a problem. And that problem will be more pronounced if we go back to the BP cube and increase the random float to, let's just say 0 0.2 to 0 0.5. And compile, let's go back to main level, play and click. As you can see, there is a delay after we click. Now the delay value also affects how fast the wave is, but what we want to focus on is the delay that happens between the click. We don't want delay when we click. So how do we get rid of that? Let's go back to BP cube and what we need to do is to be able to distinguish whether this pop event is being fired by our mouse click or by our adjacent cubes. Now to do that, we need to add a new parameter, a new input. Let's call this is mouse question mark. And it should be a Boolean. Now, okay, let's just make some room here for now. We need a branch again. And let's connect this and we're going to connect this as well. Let's reroute, clean it up here and ask the question. Is this the mouse? Yes, if it's true, we skip the delay. So we would go directly to here. Now, if it is not the mouse, we go to the delay. And that's what we need to do to control the delay. Let's just clean it up here. We can also just do this like that. So we're not quite done yet. Now that we made a new input in our custom event, we need to update this in the main level. So compile, save. Go to the main level blueprint. As you can see, a new input has been created. Think about this. This is the mouse click. So what we have to do, of course, is to click true for this because this pop event being fired is coming from the mouse. So that's it. Compile, save. Go back to the BP cube. And of course, this one should be false because this is being triggered by an adjacent cube. Okay, go to the main level now. Click play and... As you can see, the click does not have any delay. It fires immediately, which is what we want. Now, the last thing, of course, would be to reset the random float back to what we had, which is 0 0.05 and 0 0.3. Of course, you're free to choose whatever values you want for the min and max to get the effect that you want. But essentially, this is it. But we have a couple of things we need to do to finish up the course. So see you in the next chapter.